Today I'm going to show you how to make these shell display frames. These would look really good in any sort of beach themed or coastal themed um, doll's house or miniature scene. And the wood I've used is called a besh and it's 1.5 millimetres thick and that's 1 16th of an inch. It's just a nice soft um, craft wood. You could use basswood, lime wood um, or gelatin, any, any sort of um, fine craft wood. And then I've used um, lining paper, so just any sort of paper or card to line the frame, and then a piece of fabric, just a small square of fabric, and I've used this fine hessian. To glaze the frame, um, you need acetate, just a flexible sheet of clear acetate, and then um, some craft shells. And these are actually available in my Etsy store, so I'll pop a link below. Um, but they're available from any sort of craft craft store. And then to paint the frame, um, just a, a sample pot of emulsion paint, and I've varnished the frame surround, but you could paint that as well. Okay, so I've cut the pieces needed and I gently sanded the edge of each piece and I'm going to begin by attaching the sides to the outer edge of the base piece. So begin by applying glue along each long edge and just attach those side pieces the outer edge and if you find it sticking to the desk just push it along rather than trying to pick it up so it'll just come apart I'm just using another cocktail stick here to remove the excess glue And then just put that piece to one side to dry. And I've got one here that I did earlier. And then apply glue to each end. And attach the top and bottom pieces and just make sure these side pieces are flush with the edge of those top and bottom pieces here we're just creating our frame box And once again, you can just put that piece to one side to dry. So once the glue is completely dried, you can just sand the piece on all edges, um, top and bottom as well. So just hold it against your sandpaper and use small circular motions. I've already done this one, I won't do it again because it doesn't make a very nice sound. And then on the sides, just go in the one direction, just so you don't round the edges off and then you've just got a nice flush frame and that is now ready to paint now I'm using quite a um, thin paper to line the piece so I'll be painting on the inside but if you're using a thicker paper or card there's no need to paint on the inside but do paint around the sides and the bottom of the piece and I'm just going to be using a cream emulsion okay so once the frame has been painted we're going to uh, line it and to do that, I'm using this um, recycled paper, which is made with um, sort of grass woven in. Really nice sort of rustic appearance, but of course you can use any um, patterned paper or thin card. Maybe old um, doll's house wallpaper that you've got left over. 
and you want to cut um, a piece of paper that measures 56 millimetres by 46 millimetres and in inches that is 2 and 3 sixteenths by 1 and 13 sixteenths. Basically we're covering the area um, on the bottom of the frame and then we're adding in the height of the internal sides on each edge. Okay, so once you've cut the piece of paper, we then want to just cut a piece from each corner um, and we want that to be 7.5 millimetres. So I'm going to make the pencil marks on the back of the paper and then just make a small pencil mark at each edge 7.5 millimetres or in inches that's um, 7 sixteenths 5 sixteenths of an inch so 5 sixteenths of an inch 7.5 millimetres so just make a little pencil mark on either edge along the long edge of the paper and then you can turn it and make the same mark so put the ruler but just beneath those pencil marks and do seven and a half again and then we're just making a square at each corner This is just the height um, of the internal sides of the frame. So just make that into a square. And then we're just going to snip each of those squares out. And then fold against the edge um, of a ruler and just fold up each edge. I actually want to fold up on the right side, so I'll just turn that over. And just crease that in with your nail on the back of the ruler. And on that edge too. And then it's just a good idea before applying any glue to dry fit this into the frame just to make sure that we've got a perfect fit. So just pop it in, push it down into the corners and then if you've got any um, bits that are overhanging or a little bit long like that piece you can just make a few little adjustments, just snip some pieces off until it fits nice and neatly inside. And that'll just be where we've sanded and taken away from the height of the sides. So once you've snipped away any small pieces and, and you've got a nice fit, um, apply glue to the inside of the box or of the frame. And I always find it easier to put it into the frame rather than on the paper. It just makes it a lot easier. I'm using this spreader rather than a cocktail stick. So again, it helps to spread it around and get it along the sides if you haven't got a spreader you could just use a folded piece of card get that right into the corners And then just fold in the edges. Press the bottom down. And then just use your nail to get it right into the corners. And this paper's nice and thin, so that goes in nice and easy. If 
you're using a card you might need to use a, a dry spreader just to push that in. So once the glue has dried um, on the paper lining I just want to use a square of fabric um, as a backing behind the shells and I'm using this sort of fine hessian or, or canvas I think it's sort of like a um, embroidery um, cotton or tapestry cotton if you can see there it's, it's sort of like a really fine sort of sacking so cut a piece that is just smaller um, than the base of your frame so I've gone about three millimeters or one eighth of an inch smaller around all sides just to create a bit of a border and then just pull away a couple of the threads at either side and that just makes it look a little bit more interesting of course you can use any um, any sort of fabric that matches your lining paper And then because the glue will show through this, just apply um, six dots of glue, sort of evenly, and this is where the shells will go. So you don't have to measure it, but just keep them in a line, two in the middle and then two at the top and bottom. And then just glue that inside the frame. just pop that to one side to dry and then for the shells um, I'm using these craft shells which are sort of um, 5 to 10 millimeters in length or you get some even bigger and I actually sell these on my Etsy store I'll put a link below you can get them from lots of craft places um, and I'll sell them in a pack of all different types and I've chosen um, six different shells here and of sort of similar sizes and then you just want to glue those in above those dots of glue so reapply the glue And then just glue the shells into place and you might find it helps to use tweezers um, to do this and keep them lined up and if you're using these sort of um, these are called conch shells just try and have them pointing in one direction, I think that looks neater. And then leave that to dry. And then we'll come back and complete the frame. So to glaze the frame, um, I'm using this Doll's House window acetate and it's just basically a flexible sheet of clear acetate and available from most um, Doll's House suppliers and some craft stores. It can be cut with scissors, so just cut a piece that fits um, just around the inside of your frame or the inside of the, the wood 
and then to glue that into place I'm using Deluxe Materials Glue and Glaze and this is um, specially for using with acetate and it doesn't fog um, the acetate and you only need just a very tiny bit um, as well which is good so apply glue just around the edge of the frame And then if you're working in quite a dusty environment, just make sure there's no dust on the inside of the frame. And then just place it over the frame. And just gently press it down. And then we will be sticking our um, frame around the top, so don't worry that this outside edge looks a bit messy at the moment. And that can just be left then to dry. And then to make the frame, cut the frame pieces to length according to the um, cutting list. And then we want to create an opposite mitre join in each end. And to do that I'm using this handheld mitre tool. So just place the piece inside so that that top corner is on the line. And if you don't have one of these you can just use your mitre block and saw. But, but I just find these really handy. So the corner of that piece is right on that line in the centre there. And then just press down and they're really easy to use. This is 1.5mm but I've cut 3mm strip in these so they're really good. And just be very careful of that blade and then put it on the opposite side and do the same thing again so that the corner is on that line and then again just press down and there's one edge of the frame so do that on all pieces and then I'm going to varnish my frame you might want to paint it or even just leave it natural wood. So once the frame is painted or varnished we're going to glue it together. So just begin by applying your normal wood glue along the mitres of one of the pieces. And then you can use the um, lines on your cutting mat as a guide just to make sure that you're getting it square and just attach those two longer pieces and then apply glue to the remaining piece and attach that piece Mitre joins are incredibly difficult to get right. If the thickness of your frame pieces aren't exactly the same, then that will throw out the mitre. So if you've got any gaps at any of the corners, you may just need to use a tiny bit of filler, or you might just want to go back with to your mitre cutters and just trim them off a tiny bit. And then once you've glued it together, just move it along. Don't try and pick it up as if it would just um, break, but just move it carefully along the cutting mat. And that needs to be left to completely dry before you fit it. And here's one that I did earlier. So I'm going to go back to using the glue and glaze, or the acrylic glue. And just apply a bit, just around the outside of the perspex. Again, you need a tiny amount of this glue. Just get 
And then just very carefully place your frame so that you're placing it evenly over the perspex and it will just slightly overhang and you can double check by looking at the back to make sure you've sort of got an even border around all edges. Just very carefully press that down and I'm just going to remove that glue from around the outside. And see I'm just sort of carefully scraping at the acrylic on the acetate with the end of a cocktail stick and as that begins to dry it just peels away. At the end you can just um, damp a piece of kitchen towel and just carefully wipe over the acetate to remove any dust. And there's the completed frame. And you can have some real fun with these, making them um, different shapes, maybe make a long one. You could perhaps just do four shells and make a small square frame different um, materials, different paper colours, frame colours and you don't even have to use shells. If you come up with any good ideas do let me see what you do. You can email me or contact me through Facebook, I'll put the details below. I hope you enjoyed this tutorial, if you did please subscribe there's lots more to come and thank you again for watching.